Coming to you from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee, this is the Quinn Spin. Hey now, and welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, one and all, to a brand new edition of... I made myself laugh with that one. The Quinn Spin. Trying to hold it for as long as I can. I'm trying to break the record every time. Anyway, I'm your host, Quinn. I'm back here on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Stitcher, YouTube now, and more for another rousing and riveting installment of the official podcast of Underground Music Collective. And you just heard Revel 9's All I've Become. That's been our opening theme song here at the Quinn Spin since the great year of 2014, and it will be until the very end of days. And we're back here at Helping Our Music Evolve on the Quinn Spin interview set. And I am rejoined, although joined on set for the first time ever, by Mr. Ty Warner, who was on the show last October. Uh, a couple new singles out since then. Uh, but Mr. Warner, thank you so much for joining us once again here. What's the record for your intro? I don't know. I'm just I'm just making it okay. up. Okay. All right. Because, you know, you got you to gotta track it so you can get better. I'm going to have to have the team of researchers on yeah. that. And, uh, a little you know. stopwatch. A little stopwatch. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah. Five seconds, six seconds. And by like team that. of researchers, I mean, I'm going to have to go back and listen to every single episode ever. And, yeah, yeah. that's going to take a lot of time. Yeah. That's, that's my ho- – over the holidays, I'll take care of that. Anyway, I'll worry about that, but – Glad to have you back, Ty. And yeah. so, as you know, I ask every guest of the show three standard questions, which you've already answered before. But for those who are new here, there are a lot of new folks. I'll ask them again. Those three questions are, who are you? What are your passions? And why on earth would you want to come back on the Quinn Spin? Well, we'll start with the last question. Mm-hmm. Okay. And good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on when you're listening to this. And Gerard, thank you so much. You're such an incredible team player and you make such an impact in everyone's life. Aww, and you really do. Thank you. But uh, so when I talk about championships, it's football season. Actually, when this is being taped, this is Veterans Day weekend mm-hmm. and this is the NFL Salute to Service weekend. Mm-hmm. And so you talk about championships. And why would I come back to Quinspin? Because you're a champion. Oh. This show is a champion. And the New England Patriots and their Super Bowl, all their Super Bowl rings. So if I'm going to align with that brand, I'm going to come back to your your podcast because it's a championship opportunity. So we are the New England Patriots of podcasts is what you're saying. <laughs> well, the Broncos are in town. That's another crazy <laughs> thing about being a member of the, uh, the Air Force. Mm-hmm. And we talked about that is that indeed. I am a New England Patriots fan because that's where I hail from. However, comma, I live up in Cheyenne, Wyoming at F.E. Warren Air Force Base, which is north of Denver. So that's huge Broncos country. Mm -hmm. On top of that, the Broncos are in town playing about two miles away from where we are right now. Yeah. Against the Titans. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's crazy. So if you're driving right now, Mm -hmm. be very careful where you're going to the city of Nashville. Oh, yeah. Nissan Stadium is right over there. Yeah. It's right. Like you could pretty much if you stand on the roof of this building, you can see Nissan Stadium. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So tell the folks a little bit about yourself then. Who are you? What are your passions? Let's go back to those first two. Right. So. I just did a memorial veterans day let's scratch memorial wrong terminology and nothing drives me i won't say crazier is that when people mix up the different days you've got armed forces mm-hmm. day you've got memorial day and you got veterans day and some people unless you look it up and see what they are they they definitely have a uh, disconnect with what the days are for like mm-hmm. memorial days for those of course that have given their lives in 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 defense of our nation mm-hmm. but veterans day where we honor our veterans uh past and present in terms of whether you've retired or just did one stint uh, or are still continuing to serve. So I did a, um, I did a tribute last Friday on, on Memorial Day, excuse me, on Veterans Day. And to intro the song that you and I, I talked about, I'm a veteran, which mm-hmm. I'm going to, re- what you're gonna, we're going to release here probably in the next quarter year, I think. Uh, the song, I'm a, I am a veteran. I, I introed it with a with a with a line from Alan Jackson back in the nine one one era when he released that song "Where Were You When the World Stopped Turning," mm-hmm. and on that particular cut, there's a line that he had. He goes, "I'm just a singer of simple songs," and really, that's what I said, and that's what I am, is that I'm just a singer of simple songs, Gerard. That's what I do, mm-hmm. and I compose them, and I work with an incredible team of people. Uh, to try to get across the finish line with the product that we want to, what that we want to bring forward, because like what I what I say is when words fail, music speaks, mm-hmm. and that's 
That's what I do. And so my passion is to use the music to communicate some sort of comfort or moment or idea and and communicate it that way because it's a global thing. You look at fan base, you look at the, the, the streams that people get and where people listen to songs and all the different places that you can go to, to download your music. I mean, it's, it's an international deal, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just the United States. So, so that's the passion is to get it out and get it, get it across globally, Ty Warner Global, which you and I came up with, mm -hmm. and that's where we are today. Mm -hmm. And it truly is universal language. It is. Universal it is. language. Yep. I mean, you're seeing, you know, I see on social media all the time, you know, a lot of American artists, the global artists are now going over to like Australia and Asia to do their tours, you know, the Southern Hemisphere, you know, where it's going in the summer now, you know, and those people in Australia know the same songs that we know over here, right. you know, and vice versa. It, it tr there truly is nothing else like this artistic medium when you Correct. get down to it. Well said. Yeah. There's nothing else like it yeah. because no matter what, even if you don't understand the lyrics, like you understand the feel, you understand the emotion of it, you know, mm -hmm. you don't even necessarily need it translated because the feeling is there, yeah. you know, um, on the last episode that you were on, which was pre video era. So it is on all the streaming platforms, but not on YouTube. You can go listen to it on all the Spotify's apples, all those. We talked a lot about the history of music and where the songs come from and the artists that we admire, you know, we went everywhere from like Beethoven to the stones to Bon Jovi to Lady Gaga on that episode. We covered a lot. We did. And so I want to know though, what you're listening to now that's informing your artistic direction or that's particularly inspiring to you right now. Sure. Well, during the work day, uh, I belong to Cirrus. Mm -hmm. And so in the daytime, when I'm driving to work or whatever I'm doing, I listen to classical music. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about that. It's just so emotional and it's just so inspirational. And it's, it, it, it's just the composers and what they're about and the different lanes that they travel. Uh, I absolutely just love it. It's, it's amazing. And so I do that until the end of the duty day. And then after the end of and by the way, when I say duty day, I, I still work for the Air Force. Mm -hmm. I'm an Air Force civilian and retired. I'm a retired member of our United States Air Force. So, and I still work now at, uh, uh, in, in, as a Department of Air Force civilian uh, in an innovation spark tank at F.E. Warren Air Force Base. So after the duty day, when, when that day is over, then I just pop around all the different um, stations that I like to listen to. Uh, there's, there's a number of great ones. I mean, you can go to the Beatles Channel. You can go to Yacht Rock Radio. Mm -hmm. You can Yacht go Rock. to, right, you can go to um, the 10 Spot. You can go to just different mediums, just whatever I feel like popping on that's going to that's going to catch my that's going to catch me for that moment you mm -hmm. know so that it's almost it's almost like cable television on your on your uh, display unit on your vehicle there's hundreds of channels mm -hmm. i mean hundreds so you can never listen to 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 all of them in one lifetime probably you right. know sports and football and baseball and podcasts and all those kind of things. But, but sometimes you aren't really, sometimes I just like the silence. Mm -hmm. I just like the silence and the solemnity and the solitude Yeah, because of the chaos of, of what our world is about right now. Oh, absolutely. And sometimes it's just nice to, to just sit in a quiet moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So there you go. I, I found that in the car recently. Sometimes I just like to unplug it. What, whatever's playing like, okay, I just need some quiet right now because I'm, you've driven around here. You know what it's like. To, you know if you if you know the video game Twisted Metal, they, it's pretty much a live action version of that, which is a vehicular combat game from when I was young. Uh, it's, yeah. But sometimes, like, it's good to just like have that silence. There's so much oversaturation of any kind of media. There's so much, so many blinking lights and blowing whistles that sometimes we just need that moment to just like sit back, gather our thoughts, you know, and. Yeah, dr drive time. I never thought I'd be somebody who drives with nothing on the radio, yeah. you know, whether that's music or a podcast. But sometimes I'm just like, you know what? Yeah. You know, I mean, my my entire life <clears throat> is music. You know, you need you need to come up for air once in a while. You have to have some balance in your yeah. life. It just mm -hmm. can't be one thing. It's got to be it's got to be different components, spiritual, emotional, physical, all those different things that 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 make uh, that make one one person what they are. Mm -hmm. Right. If you're just going to saturate yourself with one concept then you're going to be out of out of alignment so to speak by the way in case you haven't noticed 
Gerard is super beast mode lately. He's 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 gone over the top. I mean, he's just sometimes I like to say, Gerard, you need a band aid because you're so cut. <laughs> but anyways, just that's part of your balance. You you work out all the time. Oh yeah, try to take care of yourself. That's yeah. the one hour a day. Yeah, that's the easy. one hour a day. I get. <laughs> yeah, the rest of it. Have it. That's that's where I just I leave my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I just don't like nobody like it's not on vibrate. It's sometimes yeah. it's not even on me. I'm just like, you know, just I'll, yeah. I'll get to that the other 23 hours yeah. of the day, you know, because if, if you're following, if I'm following what I'm following and doing what I'm doing, if I'm not bringing other things into it to balance it out, then then it's an unhealthy it's an unhealthy environment. Absolutely. You know? And then and, and I have other commitments and responsibilities um, with my beautiful family mm-hmm. and our children, my beautiful spouse and our children and and our grandchildren. So I have to make sure that I'm with not, not making sure, but you understand I'm trying to go with this, that, that they're as much a part of my life as anything else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. That idea of balance really hit me this year. Um, as you know, I took a month up North, you know, yeah. back in Jersey. And, and I know I've mentioned this on the show. So if you're playing the Quinspin drinking game, that's part of it. Now go ahead, take a drink. Uh, <laughs> again, I probably Little like water. every episode for the last two months, I've mentioned this, but like, the chance to just step back, step into a different part of your life so you can come back and give to this one. Because as as you know now, you know, like being in this industry and trying to create a platform, trying to build this platform from scratch, it's a daunting task. You know, yeah. it's a tough town. It's a tough industry. There's a lot to, you know, even though we, we don't like to compete with each other, there is a lot to compete with in terms of like getting attention, in terms of building your platform, right? And so- yeah just like anything else you got to come up for air once in a while and you need to have that family time you need to have those other things in your life that you can pour into it's become so important for me to like rediscover hobbies just rediscover my nerdy interests you know and kind of get let that be the palate cleanse to step back into all this because it's it's a lot of work it can be overwhelmingly it, it I won't say it can be, it is mm-hmm. overwhelmingly daunting Yeah, to try to get what it comes down to. And this is for anybody that's listening out there. Everybody's great. Everybody writes great things. Everybody does great things. It's what is going to get you, what's going to separate you from the pack. Yes. That's what it comes down to. What's going to separate you. What's going to separate me. I, I always find it interesting as of late where when you when I hear an interview where people are going you and you will need to and you will need to they're saying that I don't know what the term is but it's really me mm-hmm. I need to uh-huh. I need to and I hate to use the word I because my military background with uh, teamwork is the dream work but it's going to start intrinsically with myself mm-hmm. and so what I what I look at is what is going to get me across the finish line what's going to separate me from the pack mm-hmm. and bring all those components together to make sure that I have a fully functioning vehicle in order to make this happen. That's, that's what I'm about. Yeah. Yeah. How are you filling your cup? So you can pour from that cup, but also, you know, in a business sense, in a marketing sense with the music, like what are you doing to set yourself apart? Cause everybody's a singer songwriter. We were talking about this with O'Brien a couple weeks ago on that episode. If you haven't watched it, go watch it or listen, depending on your medium of choice. But like, what are you doing to, Set yourself apart from everyone else branding themselves the same way. There are so many talented people in the world. There are probably millions of people who, if they apply themselves, could probably make a run at this thing, right, from a talent standpoint. Yeah. The difference is, how do you connect with people? How do you endear yourself to your audience? How do you even find your audience? Do you understand yourself enough to know who that is in the first place? Because that's a key, too. Correct. Understanding who you are understanding what your values are so you can go out and attract that audience. It's yep. law of attraction stuff. Yep. You know? Yeah. Well said. Yeah. yeah. And so with the messages uh, in the music so far, so since the last time Ty was on the show, we've released a couple singles, haven't we? So we had love is everywhere back in May and then blink of an eye, which we'll talk about blink of an eye, of course, in depth as well. But sure. these universal messages, you know, that are, that have personal application, but also, just have this broad application that these messages of unity, these messages of standing up for each other that the world frankly needs more of right now. So let's start with love is everywhere. Sure. So that was released May 1st. So hard to believe that was six plus months ago already. (laughs) Years flying by uh, for global love day. Mm -hmm. 
And tell us a little bit. So you collaborated with Olivia Francis on that, okay. who is a force in her own right. Unbelievable. It's incredible songwriter, vocalist, and she's been touring all over the country doing her thing. Correct. So you collaborated on that right here at Helping Our Music Evolve. Right. Uh, that was a project, you know, created by and large here in this building in a lot of ways. Yeah. Talk about the creative process, the message, what you hope that people who go listen to this song for the first time or who have been listening to it, what do you hope that they get out of it? Well, that that is, again, one of the one of the things about today's pace mm -hmm. that we come in, I come in, create a product, do what I'm going to do with it, put it in the data bank or whatever you want to call it. And then you're on to the next show. Very, very rarely do we have time to ref do I have time to reflect on on what what went into that particular song but that 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 was just something that marinated for a while because when i was stationed in germany with our with uh, our air force i was working with a drummer in the pubs around germany uh in a spang dollam air base and the drummer we we separated our ways and i went back to the states and then he came and visited me and then his little daughter was talking about just we were we were playing some songs together, and she was just kind of mouthing this yeah, 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 type thing. Just she was about six, I think, and and I said, "What are you What are you singing over there?" And she said, "Love is everywhere," and, I, and the way she said it, I just thought that it all it was a light switch for me. Mm. And so I kind of put that a uh, put that in the lyric bank, and then one thing started going to another, and then I was with Olivia over at NSAI in a writing room, and we were working on one song, but I said, "Well, this is." What do you think of this? We started to noodle with this thing. That came to fruition. Finished the, the lyrics and the music. Uh, then we threw home, and home is such an incredible gatekeeper. Uh, she introduced me to her producer, Scott Griffin, so we, we put that in the can over in Studio A. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, just next door here. And then sent it to Mark Abrams, and then we who, who, who mastered it. And then we released it, and it's just a feel good cut. Mm -hmm. It's just feel good fun. It's a fun song, and it's something that that I'm proud of that particular song uh, and the fact that the, the collaboration with with her, with Olivia Francis, and with you and uh, Gerard and Scott and uh, and Mark, and then this entire home team that we have here mm -hmm. with uh, Logan Crowell and Banks, mm -hmm. uh, and then of course Juliana, mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of other. Uh, team members that are in the managerial role here mm -hmm. so yeah that's how that one came about and we still play it live the, the beauty of it in a, in a paradox is that i really can't play it live unless she's singing right yeah. yeah so yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> and i'm not gonna have the band change keys to for, for my voice so anyways we we do it when uh when she's out in in wyoming with yeah. us or wherever we are yeah. yeah and something you hit on there is how many people are involved in the process of a successful release, mm -hmm. you know, because anybody can do it by themselves, right? You know, if you get a if you get a mixing board like the one I have there, and you're musically proficient, you can record and release. But to really dial it in, it takes a team, and it takes understanding. I think, and th something that I think you do a really good job of, Ty, is understanding what your strengths are, but also understanding what they aren't, and finding people to fill Thank those you. strengths. Yeah. You know, because. You know, production, I mean, Scott's incredible. Mark Abrams is absolutely incredible. Yeah. Having Olivia's voice on that track just fits. It serves the song so well. Yeah. You know, it serves like it's such a bright, sunny soundscape. And her voice is just perfect for that. Yeah. This folk pop sensibility. Yeah. And with that, you know, there's been a bunch of media coverage. There's been a, a bunch of people kind of joining in this movement behind this song you know you had newspaper coverage out in cheyenne yeah. you know uh radio play mm -hmm. out there with love is everywhere and with blink of an eye so it seems like people are ready for this kind of message right sure. that love is just this universal thing in all of its forms and it's wherever you're willing to look for it well i i also believe that from my air force background in in management the managerial classes that that we take uh, we call it PME, Professional Military Education PME, and so one of the one of the uh, uh, concepts that I use is the term SWOC, and SWOC is an acronym for 
strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and challenges. And by the way, let's put acronym versus a pre abbreviation. Let's 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 define that because this this happens a lot. So yes, <laughs> so, so <laughs> on a little little deviation off the flight path, but and a. An abbreviation is when you have letters that you put together mm -hmm. just for something to like shorten a word, like FYI. Mm -hmm. That's an abbreviation. But mm -hmm. SWAC is when the first letter of the word makes a word. Mm -hmm. So SWAC, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and challenges. That's an acronym. Yeah. So in case you're taking any notes today, just remember that. And mm -hmm. if you ever have, if you're ever in a in a meeting in your office and you you see someone call an abbreviation an acronym you can say ah oh, that's not an acronym call them and then, out and then make a bet and i guarantee you'll win it because i'll look it up real quick and then they'll go oh i guess you're right so anyway mm -hmm. another story entirely um but SWAC is one of one of my benchmarks to determine as you said who can do what look at successful management teams look at look at uh any successful organization whether it's microsoft whether it's uh, a sports team. I use the Patriots. You know, you have offensive coaches, defensive coaches. You have a head. You have a a, a team coach. Those kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody like you, who's what your what your skill set is, mm -hmm. what you're amazing at. Sure. Why am I going to waste my energy mm -hmm. doing what I know you can do? So I can focus. Because at the end of the day, what I really am is an artist. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that in today's media and today's construct, the artistry sometimes is going to take not a backseat but run parallel to everything else that's going to go on and sometimes it will take a backseat correct that, that's a big lament uh our friend decree here and not not to jump in but oh, like yeah. he was just on the show a few weeks ago he just released a song unfiltered which is about exactly that about well i need to please the algorithm i need to get on tiktok i need to do all these dances like when do i have time to actually be an artist and create art i just wanted to jump in there yeah continue <laughs> no no it, it's it's as you said earlier, or maybe I said, it's daunting. Mm -hmm. It's daunting, all the different components, besides just coming up with the lyrics or the the melody, finding that, finding the people, finding the team. Where are you going to do? What, where am I going to do what I'm going to do? That's, that's, that's an amazing concept on top of media, platforms, uh, working with you, working with whoever, working at home. Uh, yeah, it, it, emails, cold calls, booking gigs, mm -hmm. all these different things that that different agencies that you want that I want to surround myself with or be part of. Yeah, it's it's overwhelming. You're running an entire business, and I think like when people start out, you know, especially. Like when I started this podcast at 26, like I just started as a hobby. I didn't realize all the components, you know, that would go into making this thing successful. And I think a lot of artists encounter that too, where it's like, at the end of the day, what do you want to do? You want to write and play songs and record them, right? But to do that and to do that at a level these days where anyone's going to hear those songs, like you've got to account for all these other factors. And it's a beautiful, empowering thing in a lot of ways, because there is more power than ever that we have to do that. But the flip side of that is the time. And we all need more time in this industry. Like Correct. there's just not enough hours in the day. And as you go, you find that like more than money, more than like financial or material resources, like time is the most precious because it is the most finite. You can always go out and make more money. You can always go out and, and fill that cup, but to get time back, like you really have to dial that in and having those people that you can go to, to help take things off your plate yeah. that are time consuming. So you can focus on what you're best at or what your role is. That's the way forward. It really is. I'm noticing that too, with the whole UMC ecosystem, like bring people in to help with the content thing. So I can focus on the bigger picture. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, this is mine, yeah. you know? Yeah. So like, if I'm, you know, as much as I love reviewing all of your music, if that's all I'm doing, then that's all we're ever going to do. You yeah. know, we're not going to have that chance to grow. I agree with that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's part of bittersweet's probably the term mm -hmm. that I, the, the word that I would use for it. Because when, when I, when, when I do get to that point where I'm, the release is out and, and, and you're doing, or you're on a stage or you're doing what you're doing. Everything that to get to that point is all consuming. And then you get to that point for three hours. I get to that point for three hours and then for, for a show and then on to the next show mm -hmm. or whatever's going to be involved in that. You know, I would be crazy if I wasn't thinking that when I'm playing, I'm not thinking about 
tear down, mm-hmm. break, you know, load out, you know, the one yeah. I'm, when I'm halfway through the last set or, or whatever it may be, instead of being locked in on, in that moment, mm-hmm. which is some people can do and some people can't. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And then you think of something like touring, you know, and how daunting that is for a lot of artists, you know, I've heard so many artists say over the years, like, the two hours where you're performing is the best. The other 22 on the road, you're loading up the bus, you're getting in the bus, you're sleeping on the bus. You know, it's like you live for those two hours when you're on the road because there are so many other factors. There's so many other things like unexpected things that are going to pop up from city to city, from, from gig to gig that you may or may not be prepared for depending on what the nature of them are, how unexpected they are. Right. But it just goes to show like how much goes into this and how much you can and cannot plan on, you know, in that whole process in this entire creative process. It's, 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 it presents a lot more challenges than meets the eye. You know, it's never as simple as getting up there and just playing the songs. My wife, Nancy, she talks about it. Let's she'll use, we can use anybody really. Let's say Kelsey Ballerini. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Just cause she was, she was just on the ACMs Mm -hmm. or Ellen Jackson or whoever's out there. That artist is comparable, this is how my wife sees it, to, let's say, a car Mm -hmm. that's been released. It's a, uh, let's use a a Ford Mustang or whatever, uh, or an Equinox, whatever whatever your car may be. That's the model. That's Mm -hmm. the model in the showroom. Mm -hmm. And then behind that model in the showroom is all the people that have designed the vehicle, mechanics, uh, salespeople, all those different components that go into making the model sell. And so in this town, it's publishers, Mm -hmm. it's marketing, it's uh, distro, it's it's all the different people that are involved with that. So, yeah. And if you're. When I looked up indie artists, because a lot of people say indie and indie, indie's got its own vibe, Mm -hmm. however, comma. Indie, according to a definition, was were, were just people that that weren't signed to a label. Right. But that's. That's not really that's confusing compared to what an indie artist is. Right, right, right. So it's taking on this weird genre connotation. Yeah. yeah. And uh so that that's what I'm trying to say is that if you're an independent artist, then you're I don't know where I got this limerick or wherever it came from, but the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker, mm-hmm. somebody can call in or let us know. But I that came from somewhere, but that's what you are, you're the whole thing. Mm-hmm. It's all you. I like to say judge, jury, and executioner. Although that's a little more, uh, it's it's a little, little darker, darker, but yeah, but, but, <laughs> but, but the analogy is correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, either, but, either way, like you're going to wear a lot of hats until you find other people to wear some of those hats yeah. to take some of those hats off your head. Yeah. It's like the caps for sale book that was around when I was in elementary school. You know? Yeah. The guy was just riding a bike, <laughs> selling hats, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. And he yeah. had like 20 on his head. Like that's us. That's we're, us. We're the caps for sale guy. That's what yeah. we are. <laughs> and and home, where home is, I find that home is such an incredibly giving and communal vibe because anybody that I walk in, I, I'll get distracted because I'll run, like, I, I, what's his name? Alan Fine? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Alan. Yeah. yeah. So we ran into him yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, and he's just a gem of a guy, mm-hmm. and he's trying to make it make a run at it and, and he's always in that studio yeah these days. i yeah. always see alan when i'm here <laughs> yeah and so you get distracted from what i get distracted from what i want to be doing because there's people i want to meet that i don't know here mm-hmm. and everybody's so giving here now when i look at new york because mm-hmm. i uh, nancy and i were just in new york for our wedding anniversary in september and i know billy lee who is a dear friend of mine who is a number one songwriter uh mm-hmm. And he's from New York. I'm talking about the city, not the state, or yeah. not across the, the river you right, know, like right. you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that, I wouldn't even know where to start in right. New York uh, to to make an impact. It's huge. 8.4 yeah. million people. Yeah, I wouldn't know. How many? 8.4. Yeah, I wouldn't know where to begin. Now, in che- uh, Cheyenne, well, we can talk about Cheyenne in a second. But in Nashville, I mean, it's a very small radius mm-hmm. of people yeah. uh, that you that. You can either play on Broadway, you play certain shows, or you're at the Commodore uh, for the songwriting rounds, or these different rounds that you have. But it's a very condensed, yeah. friendly vibe here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Los Angeles mm-hmm. is fairly spread out, too. Yeah. I mean, how I wouldn't quite know, even though I think it'd be easier to get around out, out there. Maybe that's not people are going to say, no, you're crazy. Cause the not anyone nuts. who's driven on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I shouldn't have said it like on that. The interstate it's more LA. spread out. I mean, it's more, um, 
because I it's sprawling. Yeah, it's sprawling. Yeah. Good term. Mm-hmm. Good term. Um, but anyway, so that that's kind of what what Nashville is about, and I think you and I are talking about people are still moving here in droves. They are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, droves. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I mean, you're seeing all the construction happening, but and you're seeing all these buildings go up because there's just nowhere else to put people, and you're seeing it on the roads now too, which yeah. again, twisted metal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's all it is out there. Um, I'm always amazed when I see somebody with half of their car missing. That's always uh, entertaining. Yeah. I mean, I've been seeing a lot of people driving without their lights on lately too, yeah, or with their high beams on the highway right behind me. Yeah, like either yeah. the beams are on. Or no lights are on, and you yeah. can't even see them. Anyway, not yeah. to not to not yeah, to start ranting about it's that, fun. but the your point about Nashville being this condensed, this small town kind of feel, even though it's growing, there still is that, and the density of music industry people. You know, there are more music music people per capita in Nashville than I think anywhere else in the world. Yeah. And it's funny. I was just at Bluebird. I first time ever at Bluebird Cafe the other night, which I can't believe in four years it's the first time I was there. But I was covering a show there and I ended up sitting at a table with some folks from Ohio and I was just talking to them about this city and the culture of it and what the culture of it has been since I moved here was everybody for the most part knows what it's like to be the new person or if they're from here, they've seen enough new people come in to, you know, sympathize with what it's like to just pick up, move here, not know anybody and try to make make a run at this thing. Like you did. Exactly. Like and like, so, but that's a common story. Yeah. There's so many people who just packed up their car. It's like, I'm going to go give this thing a shot. And the thing I always tell people, the thing I've told people, I we even said it on that previous episode we did, is if you're here to do good work for the right reasons, people will want to help you. Yep. But yep. you have to focus on community. You're making friends before you're making business transactions. This is not a transactional city, which I love that about Nashville. I mean, you get some of it, but that gets weeded out. It gets sniffed out because everybody's seen that. That's what everybody came from the larger cities to yeah, hear, well to get away from, well was this yeah. transactional, who are you, what yeah. do you do? Yeah. It's truly about building community yeah. in Nashville. And I hope we never lose that because like, that's where this collaboration, that's where this innovation comes from. That's where the independent artists, the independent artists, this community of us, whether we're musicians or otherwise, that's where we have a chance to grow and kind of create our own sub industry out of this whole thing is by working together and by not being completely out for ourselves. Of course, we have to want to achieve. We have to want to grow individually. Again, it goes back to that idea of making sure our cup is full so that we have something to contribute. But the point is seeking to serve, seeking to contribute. That's what's going to help us all grow. It's that rising tide raises all boats thing. We always talk about here, take another drink, (laughs) you know, but that that's, that's the spirit of Nashville, you know, in the four years, there'll be four years on the 26th that I've been here. And that's been, that's been the one consistent thing I can say. Yeah. Yeah. And you've done it well, really well. Appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate Think about it. where you started and where you are now and what we're doing. It's it's an amazing story. Well, it's been a quick turn. It's been a year. Seems yeah. like yesterday, but yeah. but it's been a year and you've just done remarkable work, not only not only for for Ty Warner Global, mm-hmm. but for those people that are in in your circle. You 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 should be very proud of what you've done and be commended for what you've done because you're incredibly selfless in what you do. And you're and for those that don't know, Gerard Gerard is a taskmaster. This guy, this guy, yeah, there's no, he doesn't really take any prisoners. He'll listen to it, but nah, that's not going to happen. Boom, we're going to do this. That, so, that's that's the one thing consistently over the, yeah. in the nine plus years since I started this podcast that people have called me as a taskmaster. Yeah, yeah, no <laughs> doubt about it. Old yeah. habits die hard. Yeah, and, and that's, that's, well, it's all about consistency too, right? It's mm-hmm. all about fortitude and consistency. So, and you talked about community service and again, just, just circling back for a second to, to this is uh, for the NFL National Football League, and I don't want to be too sports centric because I have tons of other interests too. Mm-hmm. But but um, this is the uh, salute to service weekend mm-hmm. for the National Football League, and probably I, I guess I believe it could be for the month. But everybody's got the sweatshirts on and everything like that. Mm-hmm. But the the thing to do, but by, by that I mean the green salute to service and the and the hats and and everything. But but for me, it is a calling and it is an an opportunity for our listeners to make sure that you thank those who serve our nation Mm -hmm. around the world. And more importantly, I think it, I I don't think, I know it gets overlooked. The spouses and the children that remain behind when 
the member is doing whatever they do, whether that be whether they're deployed downrange or or wherever they are. And then the spouse becomes the father and the mother when people were when people are um, are when the member is gone. Like, for instance, I went on a what they call a remote assignment where I'm away from my family for a year. Uh, and I was in Korea. I was in uh, Osan Air Base, Korea, which is just north of Seoul. And so then during those holidays, my wife was the mother and father mm-hmm. to our children. And so that happens a lot. And if you don't know about it, well, th- this is an opportunity for you to to be somewhat aware of, of the sacrifices that that the families make for the service member to to do what they do when they raise their right hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think even even if you don't have children, it's tough on the spouse. Of course it is. You know, my my brother in law was in Iraq for, uh, you know, when he and my sister started dating. And I knew that was like because that's, that's the thing. If, if you're in Iraq, you're like you're not able to communicate. So like my sister's on the other side of the world, not knowing what's going on over there. Yeah. You know, and like, you know, if it's been a couple of weeks, she started getting really this is. God, almost 20 years ago at this point, but like starts getting really like anxious about like, why haven't I heard from him? Why haven't I heard from him? Like it's the mental toll. It's more, the, yeah, it's more the time zones too, mm-hmm. right? Cause when I was in Turkey, I was in Turkey from 2008 to 2010. Well, my spouse and our children were, were in America. Uh, so that's an eight or nine hour difference. So when they're coming, when they're, when they're going down, uh, when they're getting up, our day's over, things like that. But yeah. it's what we do and we volunteer to do it. And we do it, we do it for the defense of our beautiful nation, our, our nation. And uh, that ties into the song that we were just talking about, I Am a Veteran. And part of one of those lyrics is, we do it all over again. And, and I would. And I still do it, really. I mean, I don't wear the bag, the uniform, uh, as I did. But, yeah. So, and that's all about causes. And we're going into to the latest release in causes and having a cause or causes or whatever you do. Yeah. Yeah, and very good segue. Thank, thank you for thank you, thanks for getting us there. You've, um, you've taught me a couple things. Yeah, I know. Yeah, this isn't your first rodeo. No. Uh, Blink of an Eye is the most recent release. Released that on Halloween, which is also the conclusion of Domestic Violence Awareness Month. October, of course, D- Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And so this is a personal one. Um, yeah. You know, one in, inspired by real life events. Um, and one that really, you know, those events caused you to champion this cause of domestic violence prevention and awareness and i think it's important even though it's no longer domestic violence awareness month we're now in november to keep the conversation going which is why as we were strategizing that release you and i we said let's release it at the end so the conversation continues into the next month and the next month and the next month so here we are talking about blink of an eye so i want to give you an opportunity to talk about the background of that one uh, and where the song came from well Segwaying into that particular or, or this particular topic is that it is a 24-7, 365 um, challenge that we have. And the, the opportunity to become aware of this is uh, paramount because now that we're coming into the holidays, what I, what I know is that holidays cause stressors mm-hmm. even higher, yeah. little trigger points. So we were on stage playing with a beautiful, my beautiful vocalist, and her life was taken on stage by her husband, uh, and then the husband took his life, and they left four children behind. And the re- and it happened a little bit ago, but it is a story that still continues to be told and needs to be told. Because it's a, still a repetitive thing that still happens today. I was when I'm in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I remember I was over at the Safe House Services Organization, mm-hmm. and we just take the beauty of the things that we have. Sometimes I take them for granted, mm-hmm. because as I was waiting to talk to somebody there, I heard a woman on the telephone, co- front service customer rep saying, "Well, are you safe?" Mm-hmm. Now, when you and I are going to Target or whatever, we're not thinking, "Are we safe?" Right. So. Uh, because of that particular event, it forever changed the lives of everyone that it was involved that were was that was involved with that tragedy, to include leaving four children behind, as I said. And then it gave me an opportunity to peripherally, to peripherally become involved with that cause. And one of the takeaways is that 
I have enough objectivity to be able to address the awareness and prevention of domestic violence because I was peripherally involved in it mm-hmm. rather than directly involved in it. Well, no, I mean, I was directly involved because of the, because of the, 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 the situation that happened, but, but I was also somewhat removed to the point where I could talk about it and remain even keeled about what, what it entails to be, be part of something. And my true feeling about it is that whatever, whatever you do, or if you're not doing something, make sure that you're doing something in order to make our world better, whether it's American Cancer Society, 5K for that, whether it's, you know, because it all kind of runs in fundraisers, uh, animal shelter, com- uh, homeless shelters, uh, whatever those whatever those opportunities are, that's what it's all about. And so for me, that was an easy way to, to find myself involved with this cause. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so in that light, not only does it shed light on domestic violence, mm-hmm. but it encourages people to get involved you know, and get involved in something that's important to them. And I think that's so important, you know, for artists is to have those causes, you know, and use their platform as they build it to advocate for those causes. Because at the end of the day, we could all just, again, record, release songs. Right. But what's, what's going to be the impact of that? What's going to be, if it's just to release a song, what's going to be the impact? Whereas if it has a message and if it's meant for somebody and if it's meant for somebody to hear and then take action. That's what we want. We all want to have an impact. That's why we get into this. Right. 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 I, I think when, when you talk about the legal term for someone that represents the military from a prosecutor, from the prosecutor side is the, is the judge advocate general, the JAG that's, that's all inclusive term for, for the legal side of, those that are in the uh, in the in the military, Judge Advocate General. So I was doing a um, a benefit and singing that song, and the JAG came up to me, and the individual said, "Domestic violence is ugly," and that's where we came up with "and the ugly." Mm-hmm. It's ugly, mm-hmm. and so is it Vogue? No. Another thing that I just thought of when we were sitting here this morning is that we have tremendous political discourse right now. We have blue and red, or whatever those colors are and everything we do but guess what domestic violence doesn't separate any sort of political affiliation right it's it's everything it it can be anybody at any time in any socioeconomic structure Mm -hmm. yep and Mm -hmm. so that's another thing and and i want to look at it positively to try to make sure that we can find the patterns find the reasons why it's happening and provide an outlet for those that need help Yeah. yeah So, uh, we're all humans, you know, we correct. all, we all deal with the same issues. And I think the more discourse that happens, the more realization there is of that, that we are all humans on this spinning blue space rock together, dealing with the same things, yeah. the better off we'll be, you know, and a song like Blink of an Eye, a song like Love is Everywhere, of course, you know, yeah. helps bring us together. And with Blink of an Eye in particular, we've also had the support of some organizations out there in Cheyenne, of course, yeah. Safe House Services provided us the butterfly to put on the artwork, yeah. Yeah. which was, which was amazing. And there was a benefit uh, event out there to kind of kick off domestic violence awareness month and the yeah. whole process of this release cycle. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, again, the papers out in Wyoming, the radio stations out there picking this up, you know, again, creating this movement, creating this conversation, which I think ultimately the song is one thing, but the conversation is the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. And and so all the all the proceeds from that particular cut will go directly back to the Safe House Services organization. And so whoever's listening to this, there's I'm sure there are Safe House Services type programs or or uh, facilities in wherever you are mm-hmm. uh, that you can go to if you want to see if you can help in some way or maybe you need to go there and you're afraid to go there because it's happening to you. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know, but, but we put it out there. You can bite on it or you can, maybe it'll direct you in somewhere else. But as I said, when we started this thing, I'm just a singer of simple songs. I'm just a singer of simple songs. And that's, that's what I do. Yeah. And you do it well. Thank you so much, Gerard. Yeah. So in the whole process of developing your artistry, you know, yeah. think back before Blink of an Eye, before Love is Everywhere, 
when you and I, you know, first started talking, when you first became acclimated here in Nashville and with the folks here at home, think back to the tie then and think about the tie now and what you've learned. What's the one lesson that's most important about this entire creative ecosystem that you would like to pass on to somebody else? Fortitude. Fortitude for me and surrounding myself with the right people. And number one, what, number one, I have to believe in myself. I have to believe in what I'm doing. And because at the end of the day or the beginning of the day or where, wherever it is, you, I have to do, I have to do a mirror check and look at myself in the mirror and say, is this the right thing? Because there will be sacrifices that I will have to make for and I'm just going to sh- throw it out there for anybody that's that has a partner or married or whatever you want to call it. It's not easy. Right. Uh, but I have to do a mirror check on what I believe in and what I'm doing. And is this right? And will I get will I get there? I I hearken back to I think I don't know the whole story uh, from the Old Testament and Moses. And I think he was going to get to the promised land or something. But God said. In the Old Testament, he said, you know what? You did something, so you're not, you're not going to see the whole thing. But here's, here's the ridge line, and you're not going to make it, dude. But you did a great job. <laughs> something like that. But I don't quite know how it went. But I don't know whether I'm going to get there. Mm-hmm. I believe I will get there. I believe I'll have a hit. I believe I'll get a number one. I believe all these things that I want to have to want to happen. I, because I believe once that success comes... I'll be able to do great things with it for other people and for, for other different causes and yeah. that kind of thing and, and to give back. But that's what I've learned is that I see, cause I've seen a lot of my peers and they're not around anymore. They, they're not, they're not, I don't know what happened to them, but I just have to stick with it mm-hmm. and um, believe in what I do. Yeah. And it's once that happens, if I have to do it all by myself, I'm, I'm in, indiv- I'm, functionally prepared to do that Mm -hmm. but i also have an incredible camaraderie based team you and home and olivia and scott and mark and that's my inner circle and then peripherally from there it's billy lee and and the people that i met through the commodore debbie champion and all these people that that give us the opportunity to to do what we do you know, mm-hmm. so that, that, that's what it comes down to. And I'm just using those people. I mean, I have, if you were to look at, if one was to look at their contacts on their phone yeah. or l- like a, an Instagram feed and see how many Instagram people have and how many friends you have or whatever, and how many are mutual. And then what's the commonality of all your friends, right? That you've accumulated. Are they all musical people? Are they all uh, sports people? Are they all work people? What, you know, what is that? Right. So, yeah, that's what I've learned. Yeah. yeah. You know, something interesting came to mind as you were saying how over the course of time, people who were doing this have dropped off in one way or another. And I think like persistence and patience are super important for longevity. And I also think just being able to come out of this, you know, come out of the gates pretty level. You know, I feel like there's a such thing as coming out too hot, you know, and like being just burning a house of fire with passion. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do all the things. And then you start the reality sets in of how challenging this is. And is that dopamine of that initial like rush of, yeah, let's go do all the things. Is that going to be able to sustain you, you know, and just understanding like that this is a process, yeah. you know, understanding that this is something that we always say it here. There is no such thing as overnight success. Get that notion out of your heads. It doesn't exist right? It takes time, two degree turns by two degree turns by two degree turns to build, 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 you know, every single, you're, you're laying bricks, every single brick you lay is a part of the story. You know, you don't just put up a skyscraper in one day. You yeah. Know? You've, you've got a good sight picture on it. That that's true because I remember, first of all, it's been an incredible journey. Mm-hmm. I've met some, I have met some incredible people. Like I've met some, yeah, I've met some people that I never even dreamed I'd be, I'd be hanging hanging with those people uh for me from my military background it's uh it's equivalent when i when i meet a hit songwriter number one or right somebody's got a number one from my military background I, equ- I i equate that person to being a general officer a go right that and so when i'm on stage sharing the stage with two number one songwriters mm-hmm. that is self-actualization mm-hmm. if you're in the industry but I will also tell you that that the best thing is 
the journey, I know it's, it's, it's a cliche to say the journey, but when I think about, actually, no, it's, it's November. I think it was eight years ago that I came down here uh, to for my first open mic at the Bluebird, and I didn't know where I was going or what I was doing. I just went over there and opened and just hung around, and that was my first check ride, right, for, for, into, the, into the open mic deal. And then next night I went to the to, to the um, to the Commodore Grill mm-hmm. and open mic there, and then then it just began to start to build. And here here we are eight years later, and mm-hmm. it's 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 gone by in such a flash. Mm-hmm. So, but obviously I believe that I wanted to do it while still working full time mm-hmm. and still all the all the different components. Uh, my my beautiful family yeah. involved too, you know, mm-hmm. getting on a plane like, <laughs> like so. Yesterday we always talk about this, you know. Got up at three. Mm-hmm. Here here's the fortitude: getting up at three in the morning, fl- driving out to DIA, getting on a plane, getting off air stairs drop. You get off the plane, and then you I go to work, mm-hmm. and then get up the next day, and here we are together. Yep, gonna do an open round t- tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Network and then to Monday, head back, go back to my day gig. So it's all about. It's all about fortitude and believing in myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and keeping it in balance. You know, and the more you have established in other areas of your life, the tougher that is. You know, it is. Yeah, having it a is. family, having the uh, an established career elsewhere outside of the industry. Yeah. How do you keep it all in balance? Like how, like how do you address that challenge? Faith, my faith. Yeah, whatever your faith may be, to believe in something. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to. I, I know. I'll keep it private, but, but I just believe that, that our air force, my air force has given me the, the components to, to keep myself in what I refer to as a vector check. Mm -hmm. And when something's out of alignment, I know where to go to get that help. Mm -hmm. Right. Because right now the whole mental health, your mental health, that whole term is finally, finally being accepted as a positive thing. Mm-hmm. And if one needs some sort of solace in some way, wherever, whether it be a, a church, a synagogue, wherever you may go, a temple, wherever, um, a mosque, wherever you need to go, that's part of what the, I believe that's where the balance begins. Some kind of spiritual connection to something yeah. bigger than yourself. Yeah. Yeah, so that that's what it is because it, it it's a, it's an incredibly daunting task, and and I will also say grassroots level that that my beautiful wife is is the one that has allowed me to kind of how can I say this I'm almost single but married, mm-hmm. right? I mean it's a it's a it's a it's a great it's a great term, um, and I'll give you a funny story. Okay, so my beautiful wife, so I want to buy a van. I want to buy a van for the band, right? Yeah. So I want to buy a van, and so. There was a, there was a van in the paper that I was looking at, and I've, we've already got a number of cars already. Cars and guitars; those are my passions, mm-hmm. dude. Those are like my my little things that I enjoy a lot. So um, I want to buy a van so I can leave all the equipment in the van. I, I got a pickup truck and it doesn't have a camper on it, and I want to pick up pu- pickup truck without a camper so I can have the bed. So, anyways, I'm looking at a van in the paper. It's a 2006 2006. Chrysler Town and Country all wheel drive, one hundred sixty thousand dollars. Excuse me, one hundred sixty thousand miles. They want three thirty five hundred bones for it. I thought, wow, okay. So I'm talking to the guy on the phone. I go downstairs, walk by my wife in the laundry room, and she looks at me, and goes, "You are not buying that van." All right. So I mean, it's a long story. It was short, short ending, but yeah, she's just been a beautiful, beautiful teammate. And and if you're in that situation, you have someone. Yeah, I have to have someone that's along for that ride, that believes yes. in that ride. Yes, because because they have interest too. Whether she whether her, I mean, her main focus is is being a beautiful mother to our children. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, those different those different balancing things that we talked about. The, yeah. the balance. Yeah, yeah it's but crazy. if you have if you have a partner, to your point, that partner has to be on board. You know, yeah. At the very least, that partner has to not be working against you. <laughs> you know, and I think yeah. we've all been in situations. You know, where like our desires to pursue whatever have run counter to their desires, you know, and your creative pursuits, I think will tell you a lot about your relationships, you know, because like, you're going to see like 
how that aligns with what the other person wants from the relationship. And from there, you're going to have to have a gut check on whether you can make that work. You know? Correct. And, you're so you're so spot on. And people people grow apart. You know, I've had that happen. I was in a long term relationship for seven years. And once I started this whole thing, we slowly started to drift until it was no more, you know, yeah. and but that's the thing is like we both kind of needed to go that way. I look at it now. I look back on that. I mean, it's been five plus years since that ended. And it's like I'm doing what I always wanted to do. She's married now. Like, that's awesome. Like, I'm happy for her. She got what she wanted. You know, I'm still creating. I'm still building this thing and getting it sustainable, you know, but like trying to make that work when we had two very different ideas yeah. of of what our path forward needed to be like, it can be very, very challenging for either person to get what they want or be happy in that scenario. Totally agree with you. Yeah. You're a lucky man. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I'm, I'm a very lucky person. I mean, I'm very, I'm grateful to, to what I have. I always, I always hearken back to when people say you're, are you blessed? I have, I'm blessed, but that, that has its own connotation too. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, cause there's, there's great people that it's just got a unique, it's got a unique term to it that I'm not sure everybody gravitates towards that statement. Right. But lucky, fortunate, but what it comes down to is hard work. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you're an incredibly hard worker. Your work ethics off the charts, you know, well, thank and that, you. that's why we, that's why we connect so much. Yep. So always a pleasure. We are coming up on time, sure. but before we do the sign off stuff, uh, first of all, thank you for coming on you again. Too. Ty. We'll, yeah. Well, of course, we'll do this again yeah. many times, hopefully in the future. I want to give you a chance to tell people where they can learn more about you on the line, uh, online, on the line, stream the music, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, thanks to Gerard, and I highly encourage you to to uh, work with this individual if you're looking for any sort of media content to to uh, up your game. So you can find me at Warner, com, and you can send an email there. Uh, you can also find me at uh, Ty Warner Global on uh, on uh, Instagram on Instagram and then uh, Ty Warner on and Ty Warner and Ty Warner just do a Ty Warner search on Facebook I got a couple of pages there I've got something on Instagram as well just hit me up in any capacity and I will be glad to help you and share with you what I've learned all all the things right and wrong that I that I've learned as well mm-hmm. so that's where you can find us and as I said when words fail music speaks and that's why we're here mm-hmm. and the music is speaking on all of the streaming platforms. Yep. Yeah. As yeah. is the Quinn Spin. Two ends yeah. in Quinn, two ends in Spin. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Stitcher, YouTube, and more. I'm not editing that. This is live. This is real. Wow. Kind of sloppy on the outro here. Anyway, also learn more about the show on Instagram at Quinn Spin Official. Again, two ends in Quinn, two ends in Spin, and at UndergroundMusicCollective.com, our central hub for all things independent music, community, service, creativity, and more. Learn more about UMC on all the socials. That's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. Follow the UMC 20 playlist on Spotify. We update that every Tuesday with 20 fresh tracks in the bonus track of the latest episode of this very podcast. NashLive.live. We've actually got an event tonight happening up at the Holistic Connection. We have Arreus, Dylan Taylor, and Foundation Mecca performing for our first ever Holistic Hangs songwriter night. That starts at 6 p.m. If you're here in Nashville and you're listening to this on release day, which is Thursday, November 17th, I hope to see you there. Revel 9's all I've become. Going to take us out just like it brought us in, and I'm going to see you next time. Amen.